How's it going, everyone? Jimmy Will, CEO. Been in here in the paint booth at All Flight, uh, going through a series of nacelles uh, for the commercial aircraft. Here we have one that's actually in the middle of getting done, a CFM 56 series thrust reverser. Now we talked about the fan cow. The fan cow sits right in front of the thrust reverser. The engine goes in between it. And I'll do some illustration for you so you can see that. This particular thrust reverser is a sliding thrust reverser, meaning it's uh, going over here so we can show the guys. It has an inner core, what we call the structural part of the thrust reverser. You can see here that the, this specific surface, as well as the upper surface, all have these little holes in them. And the reason for that is it's exactly uh, as what you would have in any type of silencer, uh, whether it's your muffler or if you have a hunting rifle that has a, a silencer on it. It has acoustic properties and it dampens the sound that comes out of the engine. Engines are obviously extremely noisy and for both passenger comfort, vibration of the aircraft, etc. cetera, uh, sound dampening is, uh, is very, very important. I remember back in the days that we had stage two sound dampening when we had the JTA series and we would spend millions of dollars doing stage two, stage three kits on them just to lower the amount of sounds that were coming out of those engines. Those JTA engines were made out of complete steel and I might even have one of those, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring one of those and do a little clip on it so you guys can see the difference. So the inner core, the outer sleeve. This sleeve actually slides back and uh, we'll get a shot of that, how this sleeve slides back and opens up the, the thrust reverser, and you can see all of the cascades that are on there. And it will reverse the airflow from front going to the back to front going to the high up and facing forward. And that's how airplanes stop. Guys, I wanted to also show you a thrust reverser that's actually open. We talked about sleeve thrust reverser. So this is a sleeve that is already slide open. You can see that the sleeve, this portion of the thrust reverser slides back during deployment. And these are the cascade. Uh, you should come closer so we can show our, our viewers what a cascade looks like. These are the cascades that go in there. Now, traditionally, the airflow will go through the back of the thrust reverser through that nozzle, the engine nozzle of it. When the airplane is coming in for a landing and when the nose landing gear, gear touches the ground, it allows the thrust reverser to deploy. When the thrust reverser is deployed, this sleeve slides back and all of the air that's going through the engine that goes out the back, now it's coming through the front. Alicia show them where these cascades are actually little nozzles. And you can see they're made out of composite material and it will force the air in a reverse fashion, either forward or towards the ground towards uh, against the flow of the aircraft. Thrust reversers are huge on stopping airplanes, so are the flight surface control. Very small portion, and I'll give you guys exactly the percentage that uses the brake to stop. You have to think that the airplane is not only stopped by its brakes. It doesn't have, you know, 737 has four brakes on it. It's not a lot of stopping power. The airplane actually stopped because of the flight surface controls. You have spoilers, you have flaps, and you have these thrust reversers that the engine sits in and it deploys. Now the thrust reverser uses three actuation, and this is a Honeywell product line. So all of the Honeywell product lines uses pneumatic system, air-driven system that comes out of the bleed valves, uh, the, the engine bleed valve. Uh, but also the bigger airplanes, such as 757, 767, use Parker Hannafin actuators. And the Parker Hannafin actuators are pneumatic actuators, and they use uh, hydraulic pressure. Then you have a third type of actuator that we have seen on other airplanes, such as CFM 50, uh, CF6-80 series, that uses a electric jack screw. Okay, but it all functions the same. You have two non-locking actuators. It means it will deploy upon demand. Then you have a locking actuator that you can see here that has a proximity sensor and a switch on it. And only when this engages, then the thrust reverser will open. And how does this thing engage? It engages when the front nose landing gear touches the ground. When the nose landing gear touches the ground of the airplane, it triggers and lets the control system know that the airplane is on the ground then it allows the pilot to engage the thrust reverser and do forward thrust. 
as the plane is landing and hits the ground, the pilot is not drawing back power, it's actually pushing power forward so that it creates more power to stop the airplane and pushes the airflow uh, directly in front so the airplane actually slows down. So this is a real interesting piece of equipment and it wasn't developed like this. All of the thrust reversers were done with just regular actuator until one time an airplane took off and the thrust reverser was deployed by accident because it didn't have a locking mechanism on here that was tied to the nose landing gear and the airplane deployed you can imagine an airplane trying to take off thrust reverser deploys all of a sudden the airplane drops out of the sky so very very important stuff and uh, this is a piece of equipment that's constantly involved in massive amount of heat ton of vibration all of the elements is sits on the outside. You got a ton of chemicals that are coming out of here from the engines, not just fuel burn, but heat and other elements are being combined together. Uh, it just goes through a lot. So I will uh, and talk about the rest of the nacelle system in this series, and I uh, hope you guys stay with us. Thank you for watching. Take care.